If you've been doing creative work on a computer for as long as I have, you're no doubt sick and tired of doing repetitive tasks. With a free application that may already be installed on your computer, I'll show you how to automate boring repetitive tasks so you can focus on more creative things. Don't hate it, automate it. Without getting too technical, Microsoft Power Automate is a drag and drop automation application that you can use to automatically complete tasks. You can automate keyboard shortcuts and mouse movements, launch applications, manipulate menus, edit text, process files, and much more. Imagine recording something you do over and over again and then playing it back. That's what this application can do, and it works with nearly any application running in Windows. It can easily be added to Windows 10, and it is pre-installed in Windows 11. At first glance, this application looks complicated, but it's actually quite simple to use if you stick to simple tasks like the ones I'll demonstrate. As someone who doesn't like coding, I found this easy to use and not too difficult, and well worth the effort to learn because automation will save you time. Try it yourself, and I guarantee that you will feel very, very satisfied when you see something that you've had to do a thousand times happen in a flash. I so wish I had this tool earlier in my career. I hate to think about how much time I wasted on things I'm about to show you. Okay, so here's where I'm going to sell you on this application. Let's look at some example flows that I have created. Flows are the various tasks I can automate. To give you some context, I'm a digital artist who also creates tutorials and courses. The types of tasks I need to automate are mostly video and file management related, but you can adapt these to suit your needs. Let's start with something simple. When I want to record myself painting, I need to launch Corel Painter and XSplit, my recording application. In a single click of this flow, I can launch both. It's not very impressive, but it gives you an idea of what Power Automate can do. To show you how simple it is to create this flow, I'll just create a new flow and search the actions for run, drag the run application command into your flow, and then browse to select the application you want to launch. You can duplicate this to launch as many applications as you like. If you need to create a delay in between the applications launching, you can drag that in and set the duration. I'll delete this example flow and close both applications. Now let's try something more challenging. I often need to change the size of the UI to make the text and icons appear larger in my recordings. However, the rest of the time, I don't want everything to be so large. I'll perform this task manually so you can see how it's done. As you can see, this task involves multiple steps with the mouse. So first I had to spend some time thinking about the steps, then I had to figure out how to execute them in Power Automate with the available commands. Power Automate is still somewhat new, so I expect automation like this is going to be less clunky in the future. Some of these flows require a lot of finessing to work properly, especially if you're trying to use flows across multi-monitor desktops. There is a recording feature that can automatically record the steps you are taking, but it doesn't always capture the whole flow. I find it's easier to add the steps manually. And for the record, I'm not an expert in this application, and there may be a better way to execute some of these flows. In particular, I have trouble with activating the correct window or getting the mouse to automatically go to the correct location. But with some trial and error, I've been able to make it work. What helps the most is to always keep the Power Automate application window and the display settings in the same location on the same monitor and at the same size. Otherwise, your mouse automations may become offset. As you can see in the flow I built, I am moving my mouse to a blank area on the screen, right-clicking, waiting 0.5 seconds, then moving the mouse to the active window to activate it. Next, I perform a series of keystrokes to navigate to the UI scaling menu, activate it, and change the setting. I wait again for one second so that there's time for everything to happen. I click to make sure the window is still active. Then I hold Alt and press F4 to close the display settings. I'll run the flow, and you can see that not only did I not have to do this task manually, it also executed faster than I could have done it and without any mistakes. You might not feel the same level of satisfaction as I do, but every time I run one of these flows, it feels awesome. Sure, this flow took some time to set up and refine, but now that work is done and I can use this automation anytime I like. Let's see how we can automate in an application like Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a video editing application I use a lot. 
And one of the repetitive tasks I have to do often is converting my video markers into timestamps for YouTube. This task requires multiple flows, but I probably could set it up as a single flow. The risk is that your flow might break if it is too complex, so I find I have better luck if I don't try to do too much at once in a flow. Imagine a factory with all of its various machines. Each has its own role in the process. That's a good way to approach your flows. This flow starts with a wait period of three seconds. This gives me enough time to start the flow, then move my mouse to the correct window and text field. Next, I have created a loop. Whatever I drag into this loop will repeat as many times as I specify. I'll need to enter how many times I want to loop this. In this case, that would match the number of markers in my composition. Within the loop, I want to send a series of keystrokes that will select all, cut the text, navigate to the next text field, and paste. Then tab navigate to the next button and activate it with return. And last, it will tab back to the first text field and set it up to repeat. Once the loop has completed, the flow will trigger Escape to close the window, and then a shortcut of Control-Alt-Shift-T to export the markers as a text file. I set it to automatically tab to the correct field and name the file markers. Then it will press Return a couple of times to save the file and close the confirmation window. If I run this flow in Premiere Pro, you can see that it goes through each marker and moves all of the text from one field to the other. Then it exports the markers. I can just take a break or take a sip of coffee and it's done. This would have taken me much longer to do manually. And keep in mind that I produce a lot of videos each month. So the time and effort I save not having to do this is so valuable to me. If you're still doing tasks like this manually after watching this tutorial, you're literally wasting your time. After exporting my markers as a text file, I'll need to edit it. I plan to make a video about the complete YouTube timecode creation process, so I won't go over it in this video since that's getting off topic. Basically, I am opening this file as a spreadsheet and then hiding one of the non-essential fields. Then I save it as a text file and open it in Notepad. Next, I run the next flow, which will make some automatic edits to the text to clean it up and make it suitable for YouTube. This is accomplished with a series of keystrokes. If this looks good, then I can save it and then copy and paste the timecode into YouTube. So as you can see, making this entire process into a single flow would be a little difficult. I'm happy automating the process in steps, though someday I envision this being even more streamlined. The next flow I will show you can automatically shut down your computer after a specific amount of time. I find this useful for shutting down or putting my computer to sleep after the video I'm rendering has completed. You could even have Power Automate detect when the video's file name has been created and then run the flow if you don't want to risk shutting down prematurely. I won't run this flow because I'm in the middle of recording this tutorial. The last flow I'll show you can make simple edits to file names. I use this after I optimize my videos for the web. The application I use called Handbrake creates some extra text in the file names that I have to remove. This flow allows me to rename a lot of files at once. Automation really starts to show its value once you begin working with large numbers of files. If I were still doing graphic design, I'd likely have a lot more flows created for those tasks. I'm still discovering tasks I can automate, but these demonstrations should give you some idea of how you can use Power Automate to save yourself some time and effort. There are some experimental flows I created that are more ambitious. For example, a few of these flows are meant to make edits to YouTube video descriptions and properties. This involves a lot of clicking on various buttons and menus, which can be difficult to execute correctly. I do think that with a bit more effort, I could work out the kinks, but these are not tasks I have to do often enough, so I haven't found the necessity to complete these flows. Aside from what I demonstrated in this video, there are quite a few other tasks that I automate on a regular basis. But I run these automations from my Stream Deck using multi-actions because I can activate them with a physical button. These tend to be smaller actions rather than complex workflows that require a lot of time or steps to complete. I have a video you can watch to learn more about the Stream Deck. I also use video editing software called Timebowl, which uses automation to edit silence and mistakes out of my videos. Combined, these automation techniques have saved me days, weeks, maybe even months of time I could have wasted. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. It's fascinating to think about how this one simple tool is going to affect creative folks from here on out. Generations of creatives are going to grow up in a world 
where they don't have to kill 15 minutes renaming files or doing other boring tasks. They can simply delegate that stuff to their computer and focus on something more creative instead. Honestly, I can't think of an advantage to doing repetitive tasks manually. In fact, you'd probably be at a disadvantage by not using automation. For example, I can edit a video at lightning speed, while it most certainly takes most YouTubers much, much longer. My quality of life is way better too, when I don't have to feel discouraged or bored by the tasks I have to complete. I hope you'll give automation a try, it really is a better way of working. Until next time, stay creative.